Coming up, we take a look at tonight's opening ceremonies and how they'll compare to past Olympics. The games haven't begun, and already weather is the story. We'll talk about how the rain is threatening some of the events. Lindsey Vaughn, one of the biggest stars of the Vancouver Games, is battling an injury and says she's worried it will affect her ability to compete. Vancouver Today starts right now. Hello, I'm Christine Brennan. And I'm Reed Cherner, and welcome to our studios here in the heart of Vancouver. Despite the rain, it's starting to feel like an Olympic city here. The streets are crowded, flags are flying, and the Olympic torch reached Vancouver yesterday. It will tour the city's neighborhoods until it arrives at BC Place Stadium for tonight's opening ceremonies. In Burnaby, about 20 minutes west of downtown Vancouver, thousands gathered to greet the torch. Go Canada! Go! Go Canada! Go! Go Canada! Go! You know how like your grandparents or your parents have really cool stories they tell you? Well, this is going to be one of those stories that you tell your kids and your grandkids. This is a very historical moment. Are you pumped? We are excited because we are coming to the torch run, and it is the second to last day. It's the Olympics, and we are Canadian. We're here at the Burnaby Village Museum in beautiful downtown Burnaby on the last day of the Olympic torch run in Canada. It's been running across the country, and tomorrow it'll be in Vancouver for the big lighting of the torch at the games itself. I really, 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 really want to see the torch. I don't know what you guys find to scream when they come by because yeah, I am I'm really gonna, excited. Yeah, I'm yeah. so excited too. We have choirs assembled from a variety of schools. We are so excited because we have been planning this for a year. We're singing a Stomp and Tom Connors song and he wrote it for the 2010 Olympics. Opening ceremonies start today at 6 p.m. local time, 9 p.m. Eastern at BC Place Stadium. It will be the first time an Olympic opening ceremony will be held indoors. As of right now, we don't know very much about what officials are planning. We do know that American Mark Gromet has been chosen as the U.S. flag bearer for the ceremonies. Gromet is the fourth U.S. Olympian to compete at five Winter Games. Here's a little of what he had to say about that honor. There's a lot of great people on the team. Um, you know, I, I'd love to see my teammate, Brian Martin, carry the flag, too. But um, I, I'm just, I'm very honored that uh, they, they chose me. Gramet and sliding partner Brian Martin won silver in 2002 and bronze in 1998. Tonight we've got a special guest, uh, my Game On writing partner, Tom Weir, is going to talk about the opening ceremonies. Tom, usually it's all secretive, but I know you've got something for us. Well, it's going to be at BC Place, the 60,000-seat stadium. It'll be the first time in Olympic history that an opening ceremony has been held indoors. Uh, the story is still not told, but the drama will basically follow a story of Canadian heritage. They'll try and touch upon all regions of the country. And uh, the cast of thousands will be seen by about three, million, 3 billion people worldwide. And the one thing they've already divulged to is that everybody will be lip syncing. There will be no live singing. And they wanted to be very honest about that out front. Tom, this is the first uh, opening ceremonies indoors that we can ever remember. Are there special circumstances, special things that go on because of that? I think the one big thing will be when they light the cauldron. Because you light that cauldron, it becomes a symbol that's seen all around the city. And one thing that a local TV crew discovered today is there's going to be a cauldron inside to, uh, the stadium, and then there will also be one outside. A helicopter crew located the one that will light outside. The question will be, how do they like that one outside from inside? That might be the drama that's attached to this. And for those of us who haven't been to the 15 of these, I know some cool things have happened. A couple of your favorite opening ceremonies. Uh, Barcelona in 1992, they had an archer come out with a flaming arrow, fired it into the air. It went near the cauldron, and that was enough. They had turned up the gas, and kaboom, it all lit on fire. 
Um, Sarajevo was a wonderful one because that was the last of the low-key, simple um, uh, opening ceremonies. Afterwards, all the kids who were in that one walked down the hill with all the people who'd been there as spectators. Um, Korea, they had a little bit of a mishap. They turned on the flame and it fried uh, the doves they released and it had gone into the cauldron. Uh, 1980, Lake Placid, the guy who lit the cauldron, the transportation there was so bad that he had to walk home. They didn't even have transportation for him. Um, and then uh, 19, 2000 in Australia, Kathy Freeman was on a podium that was supposed to lift her into position to light it and it malfunctioned and she had to stand there and, and just, just act like nothing was going wrong while they got in and made it manually happen. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. And of course, of course, the big question now with this one, uh, the cauldron, and who might light it? Are there some names that we should look out for as far as possible people who will light the flame? Probably the one that's been mentioned the most would be Wayne Gretzky. He's certainly the biggest name in the history of sport in Canada. He does have some Olympic ties. He was head of the hockey team one year. Uh, he was on the hockey team one year. Um, but, but in the history of the other two Canadian Olympi Olympics they've had, Montreal in 76 and Calgary in 88, they picked very anonymous people. One time it was a 12-year-old uh, girl who was a figure skater but not a figure skater of note. And then the other time it was two teenagers who participated, but they, they, had no, uh, they were not prominent in the sports world. And they did that just to symbolize the youth of Canada. Tom, we appreciate it. We uh, hope to have you back before the games are over. We'll let Tom go do what he does best, that's report, and come back to us. Top American skier Lindsey Vaughn took a free run at Whistler Thursday, one day after she said she had suffered a bruised shin during a crash. Vaughn said that it was the most painful injury she's ever had. It's hard to stay positive, you know. It's, it's hard to, um, to focus on just being prepared for these Olympics when you have such a big injury like this. And um, it's definitely changed my whole perspective coming into these games and um, definitely not the place that I want to be. You know, a week ago I came off um, the, I won the last World Cup race of the, of the, of the, world, of the season before coming into these games and I, I was feeling great, I was healthy, I had no problems and um, now I'm sitting here today questioning whether, you know, I'll be even able to ski. So it's, it's not where I want to be by any means, but, um, you know, I have to stay positive. I ha I'm, I'm for sure will be fighting every day to compete in all the disciplines. Um, but, you know, like I said, I have to play it by ear. I'm going to take it day to day and, and just see what's possible. After officials canceled the women's training run, Vaughn said she was pleased to have another day to heal. She is scheduled for training runs today and Saturday. Her first event, the Women's Super Combined, is scheduled for Sunday. Christine, this is like Dwight Freeney. It really is. The whole, we had a whole thing to the run-up, and now we have the Vaughn injury. Yeah. So, tell, what, what? Unbelievable timing, isn't it? I mean, here she is on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You know, she is the star coming into these games, all these endorsements, all these commercials, and it just shows, Reed, how fleeting this is. The fact that, you know, she's the top uh, skier in the world the last two, three years. Everything has been building to this. Five gold medals. She said, hey, just let me have one. Uh, she's a smart person. Obviously, she, she knows what happened with Bodie Miller five, four years ago. But the fact that she comes to this point, this is the moment. And now the question is, can she even, you know, be uh, healthy enough to compete? It's an unbelievable story, and we'll have to, of course, see how it turns out in the next few days. And I think the only guarantee, obviously, this will not be the last Lindsey Vaughn question I ask you. We'll <laughs> you, be back and forth on this one, right? Fog and snow canceled the women's tra uh, downhill training at Whistler yesterday, but the weather is even more problematic at Cypress Mountain. We asked USA Today reporter Kevin Johnson about what the rain and warm temperatures are going to do up there. Although organizers here have spent about $900 million to secure the games, perhaps the biggest threat to the games themselves has been the weather and, and the rain that's falling here now. For the past week, the organizers have used helicopters and dump trucks to, to haul snow, tons of it, about 700 tons a day, to the slopes of Cypress Mountain to prepare for the competition that begins this weekend. Racer Stacy Cook crashed during downhill training at Whistler yesterday. She was helicoptered off the mountain, but released later in the day. She looks likely to compete. Here's a look at some of the places where the competitions will be held. Curling, figure skating, hockey, some speed skating, and opening and closing ceremonies will be in Vancouver. Nearby, Cypress Mountain will host snowboarding and freestyle skiing. 
The Richmond Olympic Oval is home to most speed skating events. Lastly, about two or three hours away, skiing and sliding events will be held up at Whistler Mountain. The men's individual ski jump is the first scheduled event of the 2010 Games, happening this morning at 10 a.m. local time, 1 p.m. Eastern. The U.S. team is not expected to medal. The U.S. hasn't topped the Winter Olympics medal chart since the 1932 Games in Lake Placid, a long time ago. The streak is unlikely to end in Vancouver. Here are USA Today's medal count predictions. Canada with 34, Germany 32, and the United States 25. But Americans have chances for historical first medals in sports usually dominated by Europeans. These include biathlon, Nordic combined, and women's luge. Check out today's USA Today for complete predictions for all 86 events. The games haven't officially begun, but there is already a figure skating controversy. Christine, you've been there before, you're going to be there again. So tell us, just dish. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, this figure skating is the soap opera of the Olympic Games. And to think that things are already exploding and the Olympic torch hasn't even been lit lighted yet, it's, it's extraordinary. Um, basically, it's um, the old East-West, the Cold War. It's alive and well at the figure skating venue. This is all about controversy involving the Russians wanting Evgeny Plushenko, the 2006 Olympic gold medalist, who's coming back. They want him to win another gold medal. They're so concerned about the fact that he's being criticized by a U.S. judge in an email that was private, but now it's gotten out, uh, about his artistry, that they're going ballistic about that. And then we were able to report in Thursday's paper that there were these instructional videos for the judges. And in that, they criticize and they look at the artistry of all sorts of skaters over the last two decades, Reed. And one of the skaters they picked little clips from was Plushenko. The Russians saw that. They went crazy. They pitched a fit. They demanded that the d d DVDs not be sent out. And they actually had them had Plushenko be purged from the DVD and bring in other people in the videos so Plushenko no longer exists in those DVDs. And therefore, the criticism of Plushenko no longer exists. Bottom line, there's a lot of talk about Evgeny Plushenko. People will hear about him a lot in the next week. The men's competition is next week. It's all about whether the Russian can win another gold medal and what's going to happen with the judging, especially the North American judges. Yeah, with Days of Our Lives off the air, that makes figure skating the longest running soap opera. Luckily, we have you and your expertise. We're coming back to you. You know we are on figure skating. Well, hey, that's it for our first edition of Vancouver Today. It just flew by. We're going to leave you with USA Today's portrait of the best American athletes of the Vancouver game. We'll see you tomorrow, the day after that, every day, until the closing ceremony.